At long last, the trilogy is complete. The third chapter in an album series we expected to see in 2019 has finally arrived. My review of Chris by Ryan Adams is coming up next on Track by Track. Hey everybody, my name's Kyle and this is Track by Track, music reviews, news, and commentary. Thanks for tuning in today, and if this is your first time here, please take a second to click subscribe so that you won't miss future reviews and more. When is a surprise album release not really a surprise? Well, in the case of Ryan Adams, I think the long overdue release of Chris, surprise released on March 25th, is something no fan should be surprised by at all. After all, in the past few weeks, Adams announced a few high-profile solo concerts, including Boston, and a now sold-out show marking his return to Carnegie Hall. It only makes sense that he'd want to have some new music to tour behind. Of course, we're talking about an album that's been languishing in a sort of music purgatory for almost three years now. Chris is the third and final installment in an album trilogy that was originally announced in January of 2019 and was expected to have dropped late that year, following Part 1, Big Colors, and Part 2, Wednesdays. But after falling into controversy, Adam's album plans got shelved, and he didn't start to get back on track until the end of 2020 when Wednesdays was surprise released, truly surprise released, becoming the first in the trilogy instead of the second. Big Colors followed later in 2021, and now, finally, the closing chapter has arrived. Well, sort of arrived. I'll explain more near the end of my review. Much like how Big Colors and Wednesdays felt very different from each other, both sonically and thematically, Chris also stands well on its own. In fact, having now heard all three albums, I'd say it's probably not appropriate to call them a trilogy at all. I'm not sure if Ryan ever referred to them as such, since his 2019 announcement was really all about teasing the release of three albums in a single year. There's no story running through the songs from album to album, at least not that I detect. If he had dropped all three within a single calendar year, that would have indeed been impressive albeit not unheard of for Adams. Of course, Ryan Adams is nothing if not prolific, so naturally, this final album in the trio actually being a double album is also rather unsurprising. Well, to be fair, Adams calls it a double album, but with a running time just shy of an hour, that may be stretching things a bit. I mean, at least 2005's brilliant double album Cold Roses clocked in at an hour and 16 minutes. Still, by quantity, both that album and Chris have an 18-song track list, so I suppose I'll allow it. Again, prolific seems to be his middle name. More is not always better, though, and that's certainly the case here. Make no mistake, there's some really good songs on this album, but I think there's also a number of tracks that just seem to pad things out. That has the effect of dampening the effect of some of the better songs by propping them up alongside tracks that feel more like B-sides. Take a song like Dive, for example, that never seems to elevate above its own basic and repetitive melody to become anything memorable. And even though Lookout features what I think is the only harmonica appearance on the album, it's still not enough to rescue the song as a whole. The track right after that, Schizophrenic Babylon, finds Adam singing You're Gonna Miss Me When I'm Gone with a unique sense of urgency. And yet, for me, the song is forgotten moments after it ends. But as I said, among the 18 tracks here, there's a number of winners to be found as well. The album opens strong with Take It Back, a song that harkens back to Adam's output from about a decade ago. It's a solid rocker that longtime fans are likely to appreciate. In fact, a number of the tracks on Chris are likely to remind fans of his earlier work. Flicker in the Fade is one of the more muscular songs that may remind you of the kind of take-no-prisoners approach Adams took on 2003's Rock and Roll. There's a great solo here, and I also enjoy the layers of distorted electric guitar. Also channeling the same era is So Helpless, with its punchy guitar stings and Adams' rawest vocals on the album. Even at a brisk minute and 16 seconds, it manages to establish itself as an album highlight. The early 2000s also gave us the softer side of Ryan Adams on the Love Is Hell EPs, and you'll find new songs here that feel like they carry the same torch. Say What You Said is trademark heartbreak, while the exquisitely delicate I Got Lost features an acoustic guitar performance that feels as fragile as the vocal. 
Even going further back to the sound on Adam's solo debut, Spinning Wheel would be right at home alongside another wheel song you may know from 2000's Heartbreaker. Meanwhile, Crooked Shake, with its beautifully layered acoustic guitar and piano instrumentation, would have been right at home on the aforementioned Cold Roses. Now, on last year's Big Colors album, Adams seemed to go all in on paying homage to the sound of the 80s. We do get a few songs here that feel like a continuation of that theme. Aching for More brings back memories of early 80s songs by John Cougar, Greg Kinn, and yes, even Brian Adams. I also get a bit of uh, Smith's vibe from the jangly guitars on About Time, and then some solo Springsteen influence. Think I'm on fire here on songs like Still a Cage and Moving Target. Among the other songs I want to be sure to highlight is Was I Wrong, the only track on the album to feature a string arrangement. To some, that may feel a little out of place in the rest of the song cycle, but I actually felt like it was a welcome new sonic texture at that point on the album. I love how the strings complement the acoustic guitar, a sensation that intensifies when a second acoustic guitar counter melody emerges on the second verse. With a runtime of just over two minutes, my first impression was that the song was criminally short. But upon repeat listens, I've come to feel that it's actually perfect the way it is. Good things in small packages, as they say. Of course, we do need to talk about the title song from this album, because it certainly ranks among Ryan Adams' most personal compositions. The album as a whole, and this song in particular, are a tribute to Adams' brother Chris, who died in 2017. In the song, he references Chris as a friend rather than a brother, so there may be some degree of creative liberties at play. Still, it's an achingly earnest tribute that finds Adam singing lines like, Will I ever see you again? Or, Somewhere there's a band singing happy birthday to you every night. The sentimentality is well balanced with humor, though, including a comment to Chris about Darius Rucker being a country star now, but also reassuring his friend that, other than everyone getting fat, he didn't miss much. Finally, let's take a moment to talk about two non-album tracks. Well, what's that mean? Well, first off, there's the bonus track, Don't Follow. Supposedly, it's an exclusive for anyone who buys the digital download of Chris from Adam's website. As bonus tracks go, this one's actually pretty great. Another of those early 80s style rockers, and a song with perhaps more energy and vitality to it than anything else on the album proper. The fact that a 06 appears in the metadata for the song's title makes me wonder if it was originally intended as an official album track, but later regulated to bonus material. The other non-album track I want to mention is Doylestown Girl, because it truly is a non-album track. Doylestown Girl was one of the songs Adams used on radio in 2019 to preview his then-upcoming trio of albums. In the years and releases since, we've definitely seen shifts in the announced track lists, with the songs on both Wednesdays and Big Colors getting moved around quite a bit. Doylestown Girl seemed like a sure thing for Chris, since it didn't land on either of those first two releases. Alas, it's nowhere to be found. Still, it's worth seeking out, and easy to find. It certainly would have been a standout track on this new double album. Overall, I generally find that Chris is a solid album with a few weak moments that might have been better off as B-sides. Still, I do have one significant gripe about the album as a whole, and that's that there is way too much reverb. Nearly every track on this album is practically drowning in it, so much so that sonics occasionally become almost soupy. There's entire guitar solos that seem to get completely swallowed up in the echo. Then there's songs that beg to be brighter, yet are shrouded in sonic rain clouds. There's a few moments on the album where there's a breakdown in the song and everything gets quiet, save for one or two instruments, and you get a hint at what could have been. In that brief absence of reverb, you appreciate the moment of clarity and long for much more of exactly that. Now, depending on when you're watching this video, you may be confused because you can't actually find this album. Here's the deal. As of March 25th, Ryan Adams has released Chris as a digital download exclusively on his own Paxam Records website. It's currently scheduled to hit streaming services beginning on April 1st. At the moment, 
Adams says there's no date for a vinyl release due to supply chain issues, and he's made no mention at all of a CD release. So for the foreseeable future, digital and streaming will likely be your only options. But you know what? I'll take what I can get. I've been a big fan of Ryan Adams' music for quite a while now and consider him to be one of my very favorite current, i.e. non-classic, artists. No doubt, he's not perfect, personally or musically. But I appreciate his craft and the bold chances he sometimes takes. Sometimes they hit, sometimes they miss, but they're never not compelling. And while this new slash overdue album may be a little overstuffed and perhaps even overproduced, I think it shows that this is an artist that still has a lot left to say. So I'm giving Chris by Ryan Adams an X rating of 7 out of 10. There's something for fans of every era of his sound, and I, for one, am happy to see that the trilogy is now complete. Once again, my name's Kyle, and this has been Track by Track. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, plus check out some of these other videos below that I think you might also enjoy. And of course, be sure to subscribe, because true music fans always want new releases the day they come out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.